Hi, I'm Sonia Samuels and I'm a GB marathon runner. I competed in the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. If you want any help with any training, then you can check me out at runstars.co.uk. That depends on what type of long run you're doing. If you're doing a, you know, a resistance easy long run, that's going to be easy. It depends if you're doing efforts in there or you're doing a bit of tempo. Because sometimes my long run would consist of, say, a 30 minute warm up and then a 30 minute fart lick and then a 30 minute relaxed again. Or you could do a warm up and then you could do a 12 mile tempo. Um, personally, I never went really above 24 miles. Um, but I know people who do um, three hours, so at least they've got that time on their feet. Um, so again, it's all personal on how you, what would make you feel better about things on race day. Okay, I've done a 26 mile race, uh, long run, I know I can do this in the race. So. something that is quicker than marathon pace so for example say you go to the track on Tuesday and you want to do mile or K reps you want them to be quicker than your marathon pace because what you want to feel when you do your marathon pace you want that to feel easier so if you're doing some quicker running it helps your marathon pace feel more relaxed VU2 max okay so I've done a couple of tests testing VU2 max and I think it's useful in some ways if you're really into the scientific kind of side of things um, and I think you can get some useful ideas for training from that for example if you need to run, work on your running economy um, but I think I think you know I think as a as a runner as well you've got to be able to do it by effort and feel so I don't think it's all about the watch and what your VO2 max is telling you I think massage is really important like a weekly massage or every two weeks you know just to, just to keep the legs fresh particularly in the taper and maybe after the race as well um, but I think it does help to you know avoid injury and things like that but that's where your SMC comes in as well um, I mean I think that's really important that you are doing it could be that you've got specific issues Achilles issues hip issues back issues so you would tell your program to make sure that those are as strong as they can for the race because you know if you've got any weaknesses uh, 26 miles is going to find those out so it's really important that you work on those weaknesses you've got in your body see how I would see how I would feel because you know in an accumulation of miles hard work some days you can feel really really tired it's important just to get out and get things moving and you might be running really slow I know a lot of people that use cross training they may not do a double day they may do um, um, bike or cross trainer in the afternoon um, me personally, I like the time on my feet, um, but again, it, it depends on if you want to cut the mileage, so and you want to do a bit cross training, and you've got some issues, then that works as well. I think you need to use a combination of all of them. Um, it's good for the legs to get, like, for example, Bradgate, some great trails, undulating. It's a bit easier on the legs because it's not tarmac. But then I think you need to do your specific work, for example, your tempos on the road so that your legs get a feeling of running on the, the 
tarmac as well. That all depends on you. I mean, um, personally for me, um, I was in my 30s because I was enjoying doing the shorter stuff before that. But some people are, I would say, mentally ready and mentally ready for the challenge of the marathon miles, whereas I wasn't. So I think it's very personal whether you're ready to do that sort of work and race that sort of distance.